Hello everyone, uh, today's book is Rembrandt and the Boy Who Drew Dogs, a story about Rembrandt Van Dren. Uh, the author is Molly Basdale, Blaisdell, and the illustrator is Nancy Lane. Rembrandt and the Boy Who Drew Dogs, a story about Rembrandt Van Dren. One summer morning, a man waited for his son outside a fine house in Amsterdam. Titus, hurry, the man called. I'm coming, the boy answered from inside. The door opened. Out came one small dog, then another, and another. Don't let Zelda out, the man said. I won't. Eight-year-old Titus appeared, uh, snapped the door shut. A, a few people in Holland had a pet like Zelda. Their monkey would have to, uh, to take a walk another day. Titus skipped down the steps. He spent most of his time with his nanny. Uh, Hendrik, uh, she was uh, like a mother to him. Uh, his, own, his own mother had died, and his uh, father was uh, usually busy uh, buying art treasures or painting. Today, Titus and his father were going to a rare uh, for a rare Sunday walk. His father, uh, his father's name was Rembrandt van Rijn, the famous painter and etcher. Rembrandt smiled at him. "I plan to walk to my friend's uh, Jan Jan's house." He strolled down the street, whistling. "Come on, uh, Goose, uh, Bobo, Dennis," Titus said and hurried after his father. Soon they reached the city wall. His father stopped to sketch. Titus bought, uh, bought a pancake from a peddler. He pretended to watch the boats, but really studied his father's uh, ske uh, sketching. Titus dreamed of being an artist. His father didn't think he was old enough to learn, but Titus was determined. He peeked over his, uh, his father's shoulder. Lines wiggled across the paper, and a few of the uh, Amstel rib, uh, River appeared. I'm going to do that, Titus thought. They walked along a, uh, they walked along a dike road, uh, passing windmills. Uh, Rembrandt stopped to sketch a few more times. Titus and his dogs played, but Titus kept watching his father scribble, erase, and doodle. After a while, his father stopped drawing. May I sketch? Titus asked. After lunch, Rembrandt said, We're late. We must hurry. They finally trudged across the bridge that led to Jan Six's house. Jan uh, had uh, lunch waiting, uh, eel pie. Titus wrapped the pie in his uh, napkin to take to the, his dogs. After the meal, uh, Jan and Rembrandt began to talk. Titus uh, uh, sneaked outside for, with the pie. His dogs ate it with relish. Titus noticed his father's art uh, uh, satchel by the door. He took out several sheets of paper and a charcoal. He tried to draw a uh, guess, uh, but his lines were wobbly. His picture didn't look like a dog. He wandered back inside the house and in the library found some of his uh, father's artwork. One was an etching uh, of the path led, that led to uh, Juan's house. Uh, I bet I could copy that one, Titus thought. He lifted the etching. Titus, what are you doing? His father stood at the door. You said I could sketch after lunch. Put that frame back, Rembrandt said. You shouldn't have touched what John uh, Jane's uh, uh, things without asking. Uh, Titus' face burned. It uh, bit back. He bit back his words. He wasn't, uh, he wasn't a baby. That evening after supper, his father came to his room. This paper was expensive, Rembrandt said. 
you'll spend an hour each week for a month cleaning my studio. After And after his father left, Titus said to Hendrick, He didn't even look at my drawings. He's angry, but he loves you, Hendrick said. Uh, he'll notice your drawings sometime. Once a week, Titus swept the studio and tried to straighten the stacks of papers. Gunis, uh, Bobo, and Dennis kept him company. Zelda was not uh, no help at all. One day, while Titus was sweeping, he heard many footsteps in the hall. Guess uh, Bobo and Dennis, uh, Zelda, we must hide. Titus, Zelda, and his dogs hid behind a statue. They didn't make a sound. After his father began a painting session with his apprentice. We'll work on our portraits today, Rembrandt said. Rem uh, remember, nothing is ugly. Do not be afraid to draw exactly what you see. Bring out the beauty of the natural world. Titus peeped at the, his father's painting. The girl seemed to glow with life. Oh, he wished he could paint like that. Later, Titus noticed Zelda. Zelda, no! Titus shouted. Titus, take your dogs and Zelda out. Rembrandt pointed at the door. At dinner time, his father said, This month you will spend an hour each week tidying my artist's cabinet. You'll start tomorrow. Hendrick uh, rubbed Titus's back. The next day, Rembrandt took Titus to his cabinet. Inside, uh, inside this room, Rembrandt stored his private art collection and reference materials. He gave Titus a dust rag, and Titus began to work. That, that is until he noticed boxes of charcoals in a bin of scrap paper. He couldn't resist and began to sketch the lion's uh, skin in a corner. All month, Titus cleaned the cabinet and spent some time sketching, keeping his drawings hidden. One day, Hendrick called him to the kitchen for cookies. Titus left his drawings out and the cabinet door ajar. When he got back, he found his father and a, uh, and a disaster of scattered drawings. Did you draw these? Rembrandt asked. Yes, Titus said, shaking. This is good work, his father said. I, I can't get the face right, Titus stammered. You need training, his father said. We'll start tomorrow. Titus was speechless. Are you going to help me clean up the mess? Rembrandt asked. Titus nodded and grinned. Later, his father said a small desk for Titus in the corner of his studio. It will help you keep, uh, keep you... Uh, it'll, it will help if you copy my work, Rembrandt said. Titus worked for a couple of weeks before he made a first-rate copy. Next, Titus uh, sketched the lion skin. His drawing was accurate, but Titus knew it lacked something. Still, his father seemed pleased. Tomorrow we'll sketch uh, from life, Rembrandt said. The next morning, Titus asked, What are we uh, going to sketch? Follow me, Rembrandt said. Bring your dogs and Zelda. Titus followed his father to the town square. He laughed when he saw a traveling zoo was in town. Uh, with quick strokes, his father drew a line. Uh, Titus t uh, tried to draw it, but the sh uh, shading didn't look right, even when his father helped him with the nose. You'll create a drawing uh, you want, Rembrandt said. Keep practicing. On the walk home, Rembrandt hugged Titus' uh, shoulder. You seem so happy today, Titus said. I've, uh, I've good news, Rembrandt said. Jan Six has commissioned a new portrait. We've... Um, had many bills lately and no one's been buying my artwork. They say it is too dark and depressing.
Don't worry, Titus said. No, no one can create art like you. It's shadow and light. People uh, will realize this. I know it. How do you know? Rembrandt asked. You're my father. Tyus hugged him. You are full of light. For weeks, Titus practiced his drawings. Christmas came and New Year's rang in. Finally, 12 days after Christmas, his father came in the studio. No more drawing. Tonight is the uh, Iphany, uh, his father said. Why aren't you getting ready? I'm too old to sing uh, and beg uh, for coins, Titus said. The Iphany uh, was a special holiday that Dutch children celebrated. And a uh, an apprentice uh, from his father's art school was always carried the star lantern. All of the children in the neighborhood pretended to be the three wise men. They went from house to house singing songs and begging coins. But you're not too old to hold the star, his father said. No, Titus answered. I, I, I'm not too, uh, I'm not too old. The, uh, a few weeks later, Titus helped an apprentice. Uh, I'm sorry. A few weeks later, Titus helped an apprentice in the printing room. Titus carefully hung a damp print. The shading and lighting showed the star just as it had been. He could feel the warmth of the lantern and taste the icy bit uh, bite of the winter air uh, from the uh, ebony. Titus called uh, guests uh, Bobo and Dennis uh, to the studio. Uh, his pen flew uh, against the page. When he was finished, he looked at his picture. His dogs were perfect, but he uh, his careful shading uh, caught just the way their nose wrinkled and the warm light in their eyes. They look real. His father lifted his drawing. You've done it, he said. Titus flushed with pleasure. I couldn't have uh, without you. Several years later, Rembrandt called Titus into his studio. Titus was 15. He was a full-fledged apprentice now in his father's workshop. Titus, sit for me, his father said. I want to paint your portrait. Titus sat at the desk in the corner of his studio like he used to. These days, he was busy helping sell his father's artwork. Titus was glad to uh, sketch for a while. Rembrandt showed Titus the painting. I look like a little boy, Titus said. You, uh, you will always be that little boy to me, his father said. A boy who drew dogs. Titus never became a famous artist, but he did open an art shop when he was older. He was, uh, and he was right about people wanting his father's work. People everywhere love Rembrandt's artwork. He is uh, known as the great master of shading and light, and he has inspired artists all over the world. Rembrandt is considered one of the most famous painters who has ever lived. Uh, though he wasn't wealthy uh, when he died, uh, today, just one of his paintings is worth millions of dollars, and Rembrandt painted over 500 during his lifetime. Rembrandt Ren, Van Ryn uh, is so famous that uh, uh, to this day, uh, people everywhere know Rembrandt by his first name only. Rembrandt Van Ryn uh, was born in 1606, and he passed away in 1669. He was born in uh, Linden, a, a city in the Netherlands and was the fourth child of a miller. As a young man, he briefly attended, univer uh, attended university before becoming an artist's apprentice. Afterwards, Rembrandt found, founded his own studio in Amsterdam. He was quickly recognized as a master artist known for his ability to render human uh, passions and his special use of space and light. I hope you enjoyed the story, uh, Rembrandt and the Boy Who Drew Dogs. 
uh, by Molly Blaisdell, and the illustrator is Nancy Lane.